Hi, and welcome to this, uh, yeah, of uh, this our uh, 21st Octoprint on Air uh, episode broadcast live from near Frankfurt, Germany, <laughs> um, on this very uh, coldish Friday evening. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, as always, a quick outline of what we're going to talk about today. Um, I'll tell you what I've been up to the past couple of weeks since our last broadcast. I'll tell you what my next steps will be. Then we will have a short Q&A segment. So the usual stuff, really nothing new here. Um, as always, we have, for those of you watching this live, we have a live chat to the right. <laughs> it's always so confusing because I have to point to the left. Um, to the right on the, on the desktop system and below on mobile. So if you ha have any questions or uh, want to mention something or other, uh, then just feel free to participate in there. Uh, keep an eye on it. I have it over there um, as well on my screen. and. Um, uh, yeah, if, if something pops up that I need to reply to, I will <laughs> take a look at it and see that I reply to it. Um, yeah, uh, this broadcast, I have to admit, might end up a bit on the short side because there was only one question left and backlog. And uh, in case you will not ask a lot during the live chat, well, we only have one question to tackle. Still. Um, there are some things to tell you about, so I guess just let's get started with that. First of all, what I have been up to. So you might have noticed that there were um, not only a, a, st a new stable release uh, of 1.3.10 just this Monday, of which I will talk in a minute, but also uh, before that, since our last broadca broadcast, I also did two additional release candidates, so uh, 1.3.10 RC3 and RC4. So, um, yeah, after RC2, there were some more bugs discovered and also some things that still needed some improvement here and there. So um, I took care of that in these two release candidates. And uh, all in all, according to the new usage tracking that 1.3.10 introduced for the very first time, um, we had about 1,500 1, instances running uh, release candidates. Um, with uh, the second one, RC2, seeing the most uh, instances, uh, testing it uh, with uh, 1,012. So um, the release candidates after RC2 saw a bit less traffic. Uh, some of you are still on RC2 for some reason. Um, I guess you really love that RC. Um, RC1, 3 and 4 each saw around uh, 10,000 printed hours, uh, which is quite a lot. Uh, RC2, which was out for two weeks, um, so one week longer than the other three, um, saw even uh, 28,000 printed hours. So all in all, uh, all of all those four release candidates saw over. I think it was. I think we we had them out for four and a half weeks, or something like that. Um, saw uh, 55,000 printed hours more or less and uh, spread across 1,500 instances and those 55,000 printed hours roughly translate to six years of printing time. Um, and yeah, you won't believe how bloody awesome it is to finally have some stats like that to see that the release candidates are really yeah, seeing 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 use and and are being used to print and are 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 yeah getting, um, getting deployed and all that because uh, yeah the past couple of years it was all always this this thing where I put out the release candidate and then I was like hmm okay, I'm, is anyone even using it? Am I not hearing anything because uh, yeah because no one is using it or because everything is fine? And this this was the very very first time where. Thanks to the stats, I knew silence is good. <laughs> so, yeah, you you won't you won't uh, be able to uh, understand possibly how how uh, what a huge load that has lifted off my shoulders, really. Because yeah, it was just release candidates and releases were always so horribly stressful, and now I at least have some numbers that I can take a look at and see if things are working well or not. And this is really 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 awesome. Um. Yeah, anyhow, after those uh, altogether four release candidates, two of which are released since our last hangout, um, 
I released 1310, as I already mentioned, back on this uh, Monday, December 10th. And uh, yeah, this was actually one of the last dates that I was able to do a release um, uh, in 2018 because yeah, I, I've now been doing this basically ever since I started a proper versioning scheme for Octoprint that I do not push out releases until uh, later than 14 days before Christmas uh, because yeah, a ton of people have a ton of time on their hand then and play with their printers, maybe get new printers and all that. And frankly, I'm also not very motivated to work during Christmas. So in case anything goes wrong, I'd rather have it go wrong 20, uh, uh, two weeks or, or 14 days before Christmas. And if there are any issues, fix them and roll out a hotfix release and then have everyone be ha have a stable and, and, and happy and working release uh, over the holiday break. And yeah, so basically this was why I decided December 10th is the latest date and I managed to get it out on December 10th. If it had, had been December 11th, it would also have been fine. But yeah, well, you know, you, you have to have to be strict with stuff like that in a way. Otherwise you risk cutting corners and then things explode or something like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, regarding 1.3.10, so, so far that's been a very quiet release, really. So compared to last releases, there were next to no uh, tickets so far. Of course, the, the weekend, the first weekend with the new release out is still ahead of me. So that might still change. But so far, uh, things have been fairly quiet. Um, some people uh, started begging pretty much immediately after the stable release that they would like to have the display of printed layers in the G-code viewer bag that I removed. So I don't know if you remember in up to 139, uh, up to and including 139, the G-code viewer had this line that said such and such printed layers versus such and such visited layers. And this was confusing a ton of people. So I kept getting questions. Why, what, what are visited, what are printed and all that. And no matter how often I explained it, people still were confused. So I decided, okay, we don't need that. So I removed that Four release candidates and pretty much no one complained. I mean, I think one person said, "Ha, hey, I like to have that back with the fourth release candidate. <laughs> and yeah, then stable hit and suddenly everyone is, ah, I want that back. So, okay. One, three, 11 will bring the printed layer count back. Hooray. Um, uh, I, I understand that apparently a lot of you, a lot of you for some reason really like that feature. Personally, I never use it, but okay. I mean, everyone uses uh, software differently. So that will, will come back in 1.3.11. And uh, the other thing that I already uh, did was, um, yeah, there was uh, apparently there was an issue with the, with the free space calculation that happens before a backup is created. So when you want to create a backup with a new backup plugin, it will first see how much space what you are about to backup is currently using a check if uh, it even can if if it still has enough free space for for basically doubling that uh, because i can't know how how yeah how 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 well compressible something that i'm about to backup will be so i'm just looking if the same space is available again and if so i can proceed with a backup and if not i raise a raise an insufficient space exception so the problem here was that I did not take into account that, um, yeah, if you exclude, for example, time lapses and uploads, it would still take a look how big the time lapses and uploads are, even though you are not going to back up them. And yeah, if you if your if your SD card or your file system is really 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 full, then you will run into a problem because then it will refuse to back up, even though there would be enough space to back up just your config. Um, but it will think that it doesn't have enough space and uh, therefore will refuse to do that. So this will be fixed in 1.3.11 as well. Um, What's simply a, a tiny bit of a logical error that did not arise during testing. Uh, I, apparently I need to fill up my disks a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now this time I, I remembered to get myself something to drink before doing this. Mm. Um, yeah, um, as I mentioned, 1.3.10 is the first release that has um, usage tracking, anonymous usage tracking uh, into it. I, I think I talk about, talked about it at length already in the last broadcast. So if you want to know some more about this, just 
watch number 20 and I'll also put a link to that in the description. If it was number 20, otherwise I will put the link to the correct one into the description. Um, and last time I showed you uh, a bunch of, uh, yeah, basically what I'm seeing based on this, on this tracking data. And back then we only saw the data, of course, from release candidates from the very first two one be ones because uh, the stable release was not out yet. And I figured maybe it might be interesting to see, yeah, a bit more data today based on the first five days with uh, the stable release out and a ton more users as a consequence of that. So um, uh, let me quickly switch you over to the other screen for that. Yeah, so um, as we can see yesterday, we just hit 10,000 uh, instances seen over the past 30 days. I don't know if you saw the happy tweet I sent out uh, due to that. But uh, as you can see, as you can see, since uh, yesterday evening, we've already accumulated uh, 1400 more. Um, and uh, what struck me as interesting, and that that was also already visible a bit here on with during the release candidate phase is that quite a number of you are apparently shutting down their instances overnight, or at least, yeah, night is a bit tricky here of course because we are talking time zones but if it is early in the morning or at or at night in in the, in the united states uh, early in the morning in germany or late at night in the united states then a ton of instances vanish to return a couple of hours later so around around 11ish uh, 12ish uh, so around noon or something like that my time they start to ramp up again uh, and uh, yeah, I find this interesting because personally, I just let, let my instances run. They are not uh, consuming that much uh, current. And uh, it would just annoy me <laughs> to constantly have to shut them up, uh, shut them up, shut them down and, and fire them up again. But well, whatever floats your boat. Um, I just found it really interesting to see this because this yeah certainly was not something that I expected. Okay, so what else do we see? Uh, over the past 30 days, a total of uh, 140,126 hours, 42 minutes, and I don't know how many seconds because this secondary screen of mine is too small, uh, were printed, which roughly translate to a bit over 15 years. So yeah, you've been busy. Um, we see, we've seen in the past uh, 24 hours, we've seen 8,260 instances of 1310. 108 are still in love with RC2. And then we also have a couple of stragglers here with the other RCs. A couple of you are running the uh, development version of the 140 branch. I have no idea how this is even possible. There must have been some mix up with some tag somewhere because 139 definitely doesn't have tracking yet. And whoever these two instances are, I would really like to understand what went wrong there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this is a dirty version of 1310. And uh, these were some dev versions which didn't uh, didn't show up in the last 24 hours. Um, if you take a look over here on the map, uh, I mentioned, I think that um, I do not persist the client IP that you use to talk to the tracking server, or rather that your instance uses to talk to the tracking server, but I pipe it through GeoIP before I throw it away. So I have a rough idea where the instances are, which uh, I have to admit makes me really, really happy <laughs> to just get an idea that, yeah, Octoprint is really used all over the world. Um, there are some hotspots, uh, I, I mean, basically all of Europe <laughs> and the, the, yeah, more of the east and a bit of the west uh, of, 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 of the United States, I guess here are the Rocky Mountains, right? So <laughs> probably a bit less populated in that area, South America, even Africa. And this really made me happy. Um, yeah, and not, not, not that much in China. On the other hand, I was really surprised that I even get pings at all from China because I figured they'd, um, they'd, uh, be kept away from the server by the firewall, but well, who knows? And not mine, but theirs, you know, Iceland and all that. So basically I've, I've never been off the European continent, but at least something that I wrote has been used all around the world. So that is really, really great to see. Um, 
Okay, and here's also uh, printed hours per version and printed hours per version over time so that I get an idea basically um, how much stuff is being used. And as you can see, I think yesterday we had an equilibrium where 1310 had been printing uh, about the equal amount of numbers as everything else combined. And now, yeah, it's already even past that. Yeah. Um, what's also interesting and that's also something that I want to raise a, uh, yeah, basically raise my my finger about a bit and 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 oh, what's up here? Hmm. Let me refresh that. Sometimes that happens. Okay. Um, is um, yeah, I I mentioned that in the new Octoprint version. Oh, there was a question from Mike. Uh, sorry, Mike asked, does the does the total time printed represent the instance active or actual printing time? Actual in printing time. So when you finish a print, um, there an, an event is sent to the tracking server, and that also contains the time, the elapsed time of the print job. So if you print it for three hours, something with three hours will be sent. So I just sum uh, sum all of that up, and then you get this. Yeah, what I wanted to say about the the throttling panel here, I I don't know if you saw it in the change logs. I think I mentioned it in a past in a past Octoprint on air, but I'm not one one hundred percent sure. A second, please. Mm. Is um, that the Pi support plugin that is bundled with Octoprint, which used to be called the OctoPi support plugin, but is more a bit more general and works on every Raspberry Pi. Not just on not just on Raspberry Pi running Octopi. Um, now also detects if your machine is uh, throttled. So if, for example, your Pi is not getting enough voltage, or if it is overheating, it will automatically throttle down. And especially the on under voltage um, detection. So that that is actually built into Raspbian, or rather in the Pi firmware. I'm not entirely sure which one, but there is a command that ships with with Raspbian and also with Octopi, which is based on Raspbian. Uh, VCGen VC command and that has a parameter get underscore throttled and with that you get a bit mask back and that mask basically tells you if everything is alright and if not what is wrong and uh, yeah the Pi support plugin now um, evaluates that so it, it pulls this uh, this command every oh, every minute, I think, or every five minutes or something, or five minutes if everything is wrong, uh, if everything is right so far, and if something is wrong, it pauses it one minute, every one minute, something like that. And it also reports what it finds, if it finds something wrong with your, wrong with your instance, and if you haven't disabled that, uh, it will also uh, track that. And what I'm seeing is that there are a ton of instances out there. Yesterday it was, so this is per day here, and this is why this is not as high as that one. Um, yesterday it was uh, uh, 1.1k, so uh, so 1,100 instances that are running with an active under voltage um, uh, situation. So yeah, basically what this tells me is, people, you really really need to buy better power supplies for your Raspberry Pis, <laughs> um, because a tenth of you is running not with a good one and uh, yeah around 50 overheating ones with uh, twice that much that were that sometimes du sometime during the boot overheated and yeah so there is a is a ton of stuff wrong with raspberry pis out, uh, out there apparently and this is finally yeah giving me some insight into this um, you also see so the most common reason for current throttling, uh, also for, 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 for throttling that is currently versus happened sometimes since boot, is under voltage with 96%. So, um, yeah, bad power supplies, bad cabling. Um, a phone charger really is not a power supply. Um, and this is something that I think about how to maybe yeah educate a bit more about, well, at least that gives me some good data for now. Um, and what I also did down here is I, I took a look if there is a correlation between printers erroring out because of an error. So not, not because you clicked cancel, but because either the firmware reported an error or the connection to the printer was lost or something like that. And yeah, I don't know, of course, if, if this is a causal um, relation here, but at least 
if one goes up, the other goes up as well. So um, yeah, so these were arrows where the printer was currently throttled. And past experience has shown if if you give your Pi not enough voltage and if you're using a charger or something like that, that simply does not uh, live up to um, two specs and therefore the Pi runs currently uh, constantly in an, in an under voltage scenario. And um, yeah, it starts browning out. And when it starts browning out, then things happen that are really, really tricky to debug because what happens then is stuff like it suddenly vanishes from your network and you don't know why. Um, it disconnects from your printer because for some reason the serial communication just breaks down. Uh, this usually results in a ticket on Octoprint's bug tracker, which I can do nothing about. Um, or yeah, or or the, the the web server just stops responding, even though it still responds to a ping. So there is a myriad of issues that can be traced back to brownout issues caused by insufficient power supplies. And um, aborted or broken prints are one possible result of that. Frustrated users definitely is a very very likely result of that. So I really hope that we as a community can can get these spikes down a bit in the future because they are really really worrying. Um, at least they are really worrying to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, something else for some, yeah, some, some raw numbers. Maybe we already saw that one, how many hours were printed per octoprint version. Uh, these are the print events per day. So we see print was started, print was done, canceled, errored, an unknown failure. Don't, doesn't exist anymore. That was, uh, before. RC2 started differ differentiating between er printers that, uh, prints that were, were uh, aborted due to being cancelled by the user or to erroring out with a firmware problem or something like that. And back then they were all contained in this section, but now they are separated. So what we see here and uh, what we see even better here is that of all prints that are started, only about half of them, a bit more than half, finish. and 40% get cancelled before they have a chance to actually finish. So, wow. <laughs> I mean, if I look at my own prints, that roughly matches, but still it's uh, funny to actually see this in form of some numbers. Yeah, what, what I'm also tracking here is print starts per day and per hour. Um, I'm expecting a very, very red zone here so as soon as the weekend starts, but we'll see if I'm right about that. Uh, total print duration per day is also somewhat interesting. Yeah, this is something that I still have to tweak a bit. Uh, print duration histogram, so basically how many prints take half an hour, one uh, up to one hour, one, up to one and a half, two, and so on and so on. And we hopala, and we have some really long prints here. The only problem is that so far you only get it in minutes, seconds, seconds. I, I'm not sure anymore if this is minutes or seconds down there. See, I, I would have to look it up. But in any case, there are some really long prints. Yeah. And what else did I want to show you? I think that was the very interesting part. Oh, right. Life cycles. This is also something that I found interesting. Um, right. Be because this is where I tried to track if these dips that I saw each night, each US night correlated with shutdown events. So if people are really shutting down the instances properly or if they are just powering them off. And well, the peak here is not as high as the dip is there. So just in case this means what I fear it might mean, please never just pull the power from your Raspberry Pi, really shut it down first. <laughs> yeah, but that's about it. Oh, and I need to fix the legend here, but not now. Okay, so uh, back to me. Hello. Um, yeah, so as you see, there is a ton of numbers now, a ton, ton of raw information that I'm now able to take a look at, thanks to everyone who's participating in this anonymous usage tracking. And uh, I really hope the number will grow because uh, in the future, this data will be very, very, very valuable for the development of Octoprint. Um, to figure out on what kind of hardware you're running it and if it makes sense to uh, um, to, uh, yeah, target, uh, for example, if it makes actually, yeah, if it would be a good idea, basically to say, we are no longer 
trying to accommodate single core systems and actually jumping towards multi-core systems or something like that. And the data so far says, yep, most of you are running on something that has at least two cores or maybe even four, or maybe even more than that. Um, so it looks like the, the first gen Raspberry Pis are slowly dying out, thankfully, because those really are slow. Um, and yeah, things like this. And also it, it really, really, as I said, it really helps me a ton during release candidates and releases because it shows me if stuff is uh, running or not. So if I was putting out a release now and I wasn't seeing something like, what was I seeing? I think 24 hours, uh, 24,000 hour, printed hours per day seems to be the current norm. If I suddenly saw, saw something like four hours per day printing time, then I knew, okay, something is really, really messed up with this release. So this is going to be really, really valuable in the future. And already, because yeah, I, I, I think I've never been as relaxed with a new release as I've been with this one, simply because I knew, okay, whatever happens now, uh, whatever bug arises, it's not something like, oh no, nobody can print anymore and I've ruined everyone's day, but it will be only isolated cases. <laughs> And this is really great. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue with what I've been up to because that was the big 1.3.10 cluster. I've not only worked on 1.3.10, thankfully, I've also managed to at least squeeze in some time for 1.3.11 already. I mentioned that I fixed uh, two, or rather I brought back one uh, tiny little feature that people were already missing and I also fixed the bug in the backup plugin. Uh, what I also did because I noticed uh, that that might be useful while I was um, <clears throat> looking at the, the data that I currently now get in the tracking plugin is um, I added um, yeah the, the error, the, the firmware errors that get thrown by the firmware. So the fatal errors that will actually cause a disconnect or at least um, a print cancel. Um, those will in the future also be tracked so that I can see the error texts uh, which are most common. For example, are there a ton of max temp issues? Are there a ton of thermal runaways out there? Is there anything I can do to fix that? Is there anything that I can do to help? And what that will also allow me is to see, uh, and I, I'm thinking that that will happen a lot, probably more than I will feel happy with, I will be able to see adjusted firmware error messages, um, possible new error types uh, that I might have to parse in order to accommodate users better in handling them and, and things like that. <coughs> Apologies. Uh, so this is going to be in 1.3.11 if you don't disable it, which you always can. And um, I hope to, to get some insight into common error scenarios with firmware from that. And another thing that I will add is, um, while well, I took a look at what firmware you are running or, or rather what the people that uh, have the usage uh, tracking enabled are running. I noticed that there are still, I think it was last time I checked, 140 or something who are running stock a 8 firmware, even though that is really a bad idea, thanks to various, various things wrong with it, uh, among one being the, the thermal runaway protection being disabled, combined with a, a printer design that really should not have thermal runaway protection disabled. And we've already seen some printers nearly burn down houses thanks to that. So that was actually the reason that I added the printer safety warning plug-in and uh, bundled it. And uh, that's the one that displays this big red scary message. If you have a printer that is known to have issues of that kind. And apparently a lot of people are ignoring that message and just continue to run this firmware. So what I'm going to do in 1.3.11 is, um, yeah, first of all, add tracking for when this message pops up so that I know um, which printers are actually being detected, how many of them are out there. And then I will, based on that data, see if I need to do something about this warning, make it more obnoxious, <laughs> make it more into people's face. I'm not sure yet if I will do something based on that data, actually, because of, I mean, in the end, it is your decision if you want to take the risk or not. But um, yeah, it, I have to admit that it really shocked me a bit to see how many of these instances are out there, even though every Octoprint version since I think I introduced that in 137 or 138 has 
yeah, basically been screaming at you to uh, fix your uh, fix your firmware. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll have to take a look at that and see what I will do about it. But first of all, I need some more data, and now I finally have the the way to get that data, and that might give us some nice insight into the state of uh, uh, of of fi fire. Um, uh, fire risky, no, risk of fire printers, no. I don't know how to say that in, in English right now, but I hope you get uh, what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I also did in the past, I think yesterday or something like that, was I finally started going through the accumulated PRs, and that's what, what I'll probably have to spend the rest of my... Um, yeah, the rest of what what's left of this work here for me with, because, uh, yeah, there, there was a ton of PRs that I did not have a chance to take a look at, thanks to having my hands completely and utterly full with 1310 the past couple of weeks. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm finally able to take a look at stuff again and not just run around with 1310, 1310, 1310. <laughs> so that's a nice change. Okay, but that brings me to what are the next steps? Um, well, uh, I already hinted at it a tiny bit. Christmas vacation is basically what's uh, going to happen next for me. Uh, I'll uh, drop my hammer basically next week, some, sometimes in the, sometime in the middle. I'm currently targeting that, that Wednesday will be my last work day for this year, but I'm not entirely sure yet. It might be Wednesday, it might be Tuesday, it might be Thursday. I'll see how things work out if something uh, needs my immediate attention or, or if it's completely calm or not. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this Christmas vacation will probably be filled with a lot of tinkering around <laughs> with Home Assistant because I've recently uh, started fiddling around with that and also learning how to use my shiny new oscilloscope <laughs> that I uh, gifted myself for Christmas. Uh, the last time that I used an oscilloscope was something like 14 years ago during university and I mean a proper oscilloscope. I have one of these pocket DSOs, but <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, fig figuring out how this things work, uh, this thing works, how to configure all these fancy trigger features that it has and all that and see how the uh, the protocol decoding and all that is working as well. Um, yeah. Uh, what I'm not going to do this year, which I did last year, is I will not be at Chaos Communication Congress. So sorry in advance if you were hoping to meet me there. Um, yeah, I really need the time between the years for myself and for, for recharging just with friends and family and all that. And uh, Congress this year was just not an option for me because of various reasons. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I plan to be back. Uh, and working on Octoprint around the second week of January. I'm, I've not yet fully decided on whether it will be Monday or Wednesday or whatnot, but some sometime around then. So yeah. And once I'm back, I'll uh, look. Uh, I'll do what I've been meaning to do for ages now. But as I said, one three ten, one three ten, one three ten. Um, I still haven't found the time to take a look at the pull requests that were filed. For the devil branch, which mostly are about uh, Python 3 compatibility, uh, as you might remember, we need to make Octoprint compatible to Python 3 uh, ASAP because uh, Python 2, which it currently supports uh, only is um, end of life, is going to be end of life and soon, I think 2020. And so we only have one year left and uh, I would rather uh, get this tackled ASAP, so 1.4.0 is going to hopefully be compatible to both Python 2 and Python 3, but there's some stuff still to do for that. And thankfully, some people have just um, uh, taken over command, basically, of that and uh, started to send in PRs to fix this stuff. And I'm really, really thankful for that. And I'm really, really, really sorry that I um, haven't gotten around so far to reviewing them and, and looking into that. But yeah, I'm, I'm just all the time juggling so much uh, that... Uh, yeah, it it sometimes just really takes a while. And as I said, I'm really sorry about that, but I, I can't fix it. Anyway, this is something that I really want to get tackled uh, in the new year. And um, uh, also, of course, 1311 will see some love. Um, I'm currently 
First of all, there are still some PRs for that as well, where there's review feedback, where I gave review feedback and people are now adjusting them and then I have to take a look again and all that. And whatever I don't can't tackle anymore this year, I will have to wait until the next. And um, uh, there are also some tickets right now that I'm analyzing where I'm not sure yet if there's a bug in Octoprint or not. And if there's a bug in Octoprint, that will also have to be tackled then. And once all that is taken care of, we can think about what to do next. Uh, hopefully, one for all development work again. And, and really like in the trenches and nitty gritty. But yeah, I don't know what, what's up this year with the maintenance releases eating or, or, or the regular maintenance re eating up so much time. It's really nuts. It, I hope this isn't uh, going to be like that in the future because then, yeah, it, it might get tricky again to tackle really huge projects because if you are constantly just busy with maintenance, well, I will see how to tackle that. Yeah, uh, what I also want to do is um, the tracking uh, results that you just saw, they're currently not public. Um, the reason is simply that the Grafana instance that I was showing you there has full access to the Elasticsearch um, uh, instance where the data is being collected in. And I really don't want to give anyone access to that. Uh, simply for reasons of for privacy re reasons to comply with GDPR and all that. So I mean, there is no personal identifiable information in there, but I also don't want to allow or give people the chance to create the create some way to get some more information out of that data than they should or than I should um, uh, provide them with. So. Um, what I plan to do is basically set up a different Grafana instance have uh, a cron job run regular snapshots of the data so that you only get basically get the result but not the, the the underlying data so to speak so grafana has this this um the snapshot mechanism which basically allows that and then provide that as a public instance and that way when something happens with that instance someone gets uh, access who, who shouldn't or something like that the worst that can come is that they get access to static data they can't access the actual data. This is something that I would feel way more comfortable with. But so far I haven't had time to look into this and I really want to look into this because, well, it's basically your data. So you also should be able to see this stuff. So yeah, I want to want to get this to you. All right. And that brings us to the Q&A segment. And as I said, we only had one question in the backlog. And uh, that one was from Brad. And uh, that was, uh, oh, right, wait, I have this prepared. Haha, -ha, so that you can read along. I nearly forgot that. Bam. Ha, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, why is it so important to completely fill out a support ticket when submitting an issue on GitHub? And uh, I guess that question was a bit of a tongue in cheek question uh, to, to give me a chance to rant about this topic again. But well, you're, I will. <laughs> why not? Um, so why is it important to completely fill out a support ticket? Um, let me try this with a comparison. Uh, imagine you have a toothache. And every time you bite down on the left side, one of the molars hurts. And you don't know why, and it is really annoying, and you want to get it fixed. So what you do, you go to the dentist. And the dentist, well, he will ask you, why, when does it hurt? Is there any, any specific things that you do so that it hurts? In that case, biting down. Um, and then he will also uh, get you to open your mouth and take a look and poke around a bit and maybe uh, knock on the teeth or something like that to figure out if that triggers it as well, and, and all these things. Um, okay, so bugs that you encounter in Octoprint, they are basically like a, to like a toothache. I mean, they are annoying and sometimes they hurt really a ton. And uh, uh, more, more often than not, you also can't immediately do something about it yourself, but have to see someone to help you. Maybe me? I'm the dentist. Hello. And um, the problem here is that contrary to a dentist, I cannot yeah, I cannot look into your mouth, so to speak. I cannot poke around on your Octoprint instance, usually at least. Sometimes, thankfully, there is a way to do that uh, in close collaboration with you. But normally, I have no way to see what you are seeing and I have no way to um, knock on the teeth, so to speak, and see when it hurts. And um, that means that I have to find another way to gather as much information as uh, possible in order to figure out what is actually wrong and what is hurting, so to speak. 
and that is basically what goes into the ticket. So um, if you if you look at the support ticket form, it will ask you to provide steps to reproduce as detailed as possible. So something like I was trying to print a file and it didn't work. Those are not steps to reproduce because I do not know where you're trying to print a file, what file were you trying to print, where you may be trying to print an STL, which will not work, obviously. Then uh, on what printer were you trying to print it? How were you trying to print it? Where you may be sending it from the slicer or where you're uploading it through the interface and then hitting print there. And then what does didn't work mean? So this is not, these are not steps to reproduce. Something like I uploaded this file and I connected to my printer of this and this make with such and such firmware. Then I click the load and print button. Then I got this error message post. So this is an, that, these are reproduction steps. What this uh, version template, uh, ticket template, not version template, what this ticket template will also ask you for are version numbers. So what version of Octoprint are we even talking about here? Um, what version possibly of an underlying Octopi are we talking about here? What browser are you using? What printer are you using? What firmware is installed on that printer and in what version? Stuff like that, so that I get an idea of the rough environment in which your bug is occurring. So this is why this is asked. And um, what I will also ask you for is log files of the server, of the client, so the JS error console basically, uh, of the printer communication, the serial log, the, the, the well-known serial log, or the contents at least of the terminal tab in case something hap is, is wrong, it's going wrong with the communication with your printer, this is absolutely crucial. And this is basically my way <laughs> of looking into your mouth. Um, and yeah, to, to basically see what has been going on there, because you might not be able to tell me exactly what was going in, in uh, what, what was going on, or you might not even be able to tell me because you, you are not even seeing it because it's happening inside Octoprint. So I needed logs that tell me what happened, when and where. And um, yeah, this is absolutely crucial. And uh, what, what the ticket template also asks you for are screenshots or videos or something like that of the issue occurring. And this is also, yeah, basically the only way for me to take a look at what you are seeing. So all of these things, they build up a picture for me that allows me to get a rough idea what actually happened and how I can try to make it happen on my end so that I hopefully can then poke at it from all sides, fix it, and then also in the process of fixing it for me and for my situation, fix it for you. But first of all, I have to be able to reproduce this situation. And um, for that, it is simply, yeah, every single bit of this ticket template can be important in that case. I can't know in the, in, in, before if something in the, in the Octoprint log or in the serial log will be the, the important part. I can't know if the version of, of something that you have is the crucial bit that uh, triggers the bug. All of it can be important. So if you leave one of these things out because you decide, oh, it's not important here, you can't know that. I can't know that. So just provide everything, please. Um, I mean, you, you really wouldn't expect a dentist to fix a cavity just over the phone. But for some reason, a lot of users seem to think that I can fix bugs without, uh, yeah, without having any information as to uh, how to reproduce the problem in the first place. And um, running after this kind of information is it's a ton of overhead. So, and it's really unfair to the other users basically making me run after this information because every min minute that I spent asking yet another person, can you please provide the log files that the ticket template already asked you for to provide and which you decided to not include for some reason. Uh, yeah, this is time that's lost, development time that's lost because while I'm doing that, I cannot in the, in the same moment fix any bugs that are already reported fully and analyzable. And I also cannot in that time uh, improve the software and add, um, and add new functionality. So yeah, not, not if I have to ask for log files for the thousandth time. So me having to ask is really easy to avoid. You just have to provide everything that is in the ticket template and then stand by because this ticket template ask for a ton of information, but sometimes even that ton of information isn't, isn't enough to figure out something. So it might be that I ask 
can you try this? What happens then? I have an idea, but I need you to test something or that and all that. And, and this is why, yeah, this is not, not basically the bug tracker shouldn't be con considered something where you dump some problem and then wait for it to get fixed. So, but you should consider it a place where I'm trying to, po I'm possibly will have to create a dialogue with you. So stand by and please, yeah, please just be open to collaboration. Because, yeah, collaboration makes back analysis and removal really effective and actually also fun in a way. Because if you are, you know, if you're not trying to figure out this problem alone and the user is not responding anymore, that's... Other, let, let me rephrase this because I just stumbled over my tongue tremendously. Um, what, I, what I have to do a ton of is uh, try to fix a bug without getting any help from the user. So the user is just frustrated, it's not working, fix it. And I'm there and I'm like, sorry, but I have no idea how to reproduce it. I cannot reproduce it. I don't have your hardware. I have no idea what to do here. Um, and this is not a ton of fun, actually. And this is actually one of the parts of my work, of my daily work life that I don't look forward to at all. And then you know, on, on the other hand, we have these tickets where the user is really, really engaged and trying to figure out it alongside with me. like. Here are all the logs and I already tested this, 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 and this, and then I got these results. And by the way, I'm also, I also have some files for here to, for, for you to test. And also, by the way, would it help if I gave you access to my instance? The latter part, of course, is not always technically possible and I fully understand that, but this is a completely different uh, relationship from the get-go, right? Because it's like, here's, here's someone with a problem, but instead of being frustrated about it and grumbling at me about it, they are, they, they show a very, very, in very active interest in getting it fixed and, and doing their part to get it fixed. And this is really, really awesome. And I would really love to have more of that and less of the first one. Yeah. In any case, please, 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 please always fill out the full ticket template. Even if you think, oh, what does she need that information for? And it might be that I actually do not need all of that information for, but it might also be that I need all of that information. And then you've just these just cost me another half an hour or so hunting it down and uh, that half an hour is then lost to the whole community and just don't be that guy all right give this dentist a chance please anyhow that was that question and that was the only question that we had in the backlog as i mentioned which brings me to my question are there any questions in the live chat so i'll just quickly look through it Mm. Oh, no question, but JR just said that he just enabled usage tracking. Thank you. Really, that really helps a ton. Everyone uh, who enables it helps me to get a good databases. Okay. In that case, I can switch back to me completely. Also, uh, sorry, in case you are hearing the ringing outside, we have a, there is a church about... 100 meter as the bird flies over there and sometimes it gets really loud in the evening today seems to be such an evening i mean you get used to it and it's better than the flight noises uh, frankfurt airport is also quite close so yeah i'm not sure what's worse <laughs> uh, usually the church actually because the planes are still high enough that they are not that big of a bother here in any case there are still no questions, so let's just wrap this up, I guess. Mm. And thanks to me spending so much time in Grafana, it actually didn't even get that, sh that, much, sh that much shorter than usual, as I just saw. Yay. Um, okay, so as you might have guessed from the date that we have today, uh, December the 14th, this, will, this was the last broadcast of 2018. So the next one will be in 2019 and due to my vacation, probably in late January or early February. So not in mid January, because then I would be talking to you about uh, uh, roughly one and a half weeks of work. I don't think that this is really informational for anyone. Um, I will post the appointment on Patreon as always so that you get an early warning and can see if you can make it and schedule it uh, if so. And uh, yeah, until then, all that's left to say for me really is happy holidays. And uh, I wish you all a good rutsch, a good slip into 2019. 
and I hope we see uh, each other on the other side again. And yeah, as always, thanks for being here. And I hope this uh, broadcast was interesting for you. And until next time, I guess it's uh, just uh, happy printing. Bye.